A Russian deadline for the last remaining soldiers defending the besieged port city of Mariupol to surrender has expired. Moscow had claimed it would guarantee the lives of any fighters who laid down their arms, but Ukraine's prime minister has insisted their soldiers will fight to the end. From the capital, Kyiv, this report from Peter Smith. Russia is closing in on Mariupol. The last defenders of the city were given an ultimatum. Surrender by this morning or you will not be spared. Those Ukrainians still left have decided to fight on. President Zelensky says the situation in Mariupol will not get better. And he is concerned about Ukrainian children allegedly taken away to Russia. We heard about five, about 5,000 children deported from this region to, to Russian side because they didn't allow them to go to the Ukrainian side, I mean the Ukrainian control side, yes? That's it, so we don't know what is with their children. Where are they? Nobody knows. The absence of information is because Mariupol has been cut off by Russia. No electricity, no phone calls, no internet. How are you feeling now? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but we've spoken to survivors of the siege. Andre tells us what happened when he was caught taking photographs. A Russian military police officer came and that soldier just asked him, OK, well, what should we do with this civilian? And that guy uh, told him, OK, shoot him. This is, a, uh, this is a actually exact quote, you know, shoot him. We already shot two civilians uh, today. Just a miracle happened. My statements that, that I'm a historian uh, saved me. Brothers Alexei and Sasha managed to get their wives and children out, but they don't know if their parents are alive or dead. The bullets are flying overhead. Will you reach the river or not? Will you get water? Will you get back to your home? It's Russian roulette. Vladimir Putin says he's liberating your city of Mariupol. What's he liberating you from? Vladimir Putin has liberated us from our Putin, he has liberated us from our life from our jobs, from our memories. If they call this liberation, then yes, we could say he liberated us. The full scale of horrors hidden in Mariupol is still unknown. For now, it is the testimony of survivors helping to shed light on life inside Ukraine's darkest city. Peter Smith, ITV News, Kyiv. The West's decision to impose tough sanctions on Russia in the wake of its invasion of Ukraine targeted in particular the rich and most influential. But it's not just the oligarchs and politicians being affected. Ordinary Russians are beginning to pay the price too, as Carl Dinan reports from Moscow. It's not just the oligarchs. Ordinary Russians are also finding their lives disrupted by sanctions. Vera rents a small apartment. She was about to buy her own place, but then interest rates hit 20%. And along with everything else, the price of dog food is going up. More luxury products, not everyday necessities, have risen in price by about 30%. Everything else, bread, milk, eggs, potatoes, fruits and vegetables, have increased by about 10 to 15%. Who do you hold responsible for the economic problems that Russia faces? The people responsible for these economic problems are the people who impose the sanctions. Our government is responsible for the fact we didn't properly find substitutes for foreign products. We should pay more attention to this now. Those who are closer to the centre of power talk tough on sanctions. Pyotr Tolstoy, deputy chairman of the Duma, is himself under sanction. I'm under EU sanctions, I'm under British sanctions, under US sanctions and under Japanese sanctions. And you know what? Nothing has changed. I have a Japanese car, a Toyota. Probably I should sell it in retaliation. That's all. Nothing else has changed in my life, I assure you. In downtown Moscow, international designers have shut up shop. Temporarily, they say, and for what the signs on their doors euphemistically call technical reasons. 
More than 600 global companies have voluntarily withdrawn from the Russian market in whole or in part, and economists are expecting a 10 to 15 percent contraction in the Russian economy, potentially the sharpest recession since the days of the Soviet Union. So far, Russia's central bank has managed to prop up the ruble and alleviate some of the initial financial shock, but the Russian economy is heading for a difficult place. Whether that has an impact on Russia's actions in Ukraine is another question. Carl Dinan, ITV News, Moscow. Pope Francis used his Easter Sunday message to plea for peace in Ukraine as well as conflicts in other parts of the world. Addressing an audience of 50,000 worshippers gathered in St. Peter's Square to celebrate Easter Mass, the Pope called this an Easter of war as he denounced what he called the cruel and senseless war in Ukraine.